Welcome back to Movie Stacks. Today we'll be diving into an American action sci-fi film from 2009 titled X-Men Origins Wolverine. Without wasting your time, let's jump into the recap. At the beginning we see Canada in 1845. Victor is in his room keeping company for his brother James, who is very ill. Then John Hallett shows up to check if his son's fever is going down. Suddenly, Victor's father appears at the door and starts calling for Elizabeth, the boy's mother. John goes there to defend his wife and ends up getting shot. Seeing his father lifeless on the ground, the boy becomes enraged, and sharp claws made of bone come out of his fists. Immediately, he attacks Thomas Logan and pierces his abdomen before he dies. The man reveals that he is, in fact, James's biological father. Elizabeth becomes afraid of her son, believing him to be a monster. James must run away but is surrounded by his older brother. When he arrives in the forest, James believes that Victor wishes to avenge his father's death. However, the boy decides to support his brother and runs away with him. From that day on, the two brothers were never separated again. They fought in several wars side by side and did not die even when they were bombed. Victor is also a mutant, and his beastly powers give him strength and agility beyond human. However, over the years, he has become a mean and violent man who hurts people for pure pleasure. His brother, who has adopted the name Logan, does not agree with his attitudes and tries to stop him. But when he sees Victor surrounded by other soldiers, he decides to stand by his side. As a result, they are both sentenced to death by firing squad. Since they are unable to die, they were locked up in a tiny cell and believed that they would spend the rest of their days in that filthy place. Until they received a visit from Major William Stryker. The man offers the pair the opportunity to leave that place to join him and his team of mercenaries. They board a plane on their way to their first mission, and inside the aircraft, they meet their new co-workers. Among them is Wade, the swordsman, considered a perfect soldier who possesses all the necessary skills to execute the missions. And his only flaw, according to Stryker, is that he is a big talker. The team lands in Nigeria, and Maverick eliminates all the soldiers with his guns. The man is skilled with his guns and can hit a target from miles away. The only survivor is a soldier who was hiding inside the war tank. He intends to eliminate the invaders with a cannon attack, but Fred uses his own arm to block the barrel, causing the tank to explode. Through the cameras, the businessman who owns that refinery is able to detect the invaders and cuts the power so that they cannot reach his room. However, Bradley uses his powers to get the power back on, and the security guards position their guns to fire as soon as the elevator opens. Now, it is Wade's turn to use his skills on behalf of the team. He is the first to exit the elevator and uses his swords to dodge the bullets as he advances. The swordsman takes out the shooters until none of them are left standing. The businessman then decides to get the gun that is hidden under his desk to defend himself, but John appears beside him via teleportation and points a gun at his head. In an attempt to survive that attack, the businessman states that they can keep all the diamonds. However, Stryker states that it is not those stones that he is interested in. The man asks where the adamantium was found, and finds out that the stone came from a small village which is three days away from that place. Once there, the mercenary group takes all the villagers hostage and questions the village leader about the origin of the adamantium. However, the man refuses to say where the object was found and claims that the stone is sacred. So Stryker orders Victor to eliminate that guy. When the villagers see their leader dead, they become desperate and try to escape. Seeing innocent people being eliminated, Logan rebels. He orders his brother to release the victim and decides to leave that group. He throws his necklace on the ground, and none of his team members dares try to stop him from leaving, because they know they will not be able to defeat him. Six years have passed, and Logan is now living with his wife on an isolated mountain in Canada. He leads a simple life and works as a lumberjack to make ends meet. Sometime during this six-year period, the mercenary group broke up, and Bradley now works in an amusement park. In his tent, visitors have a chance to win a prize if they manage to turn off the light. However, since the young man uses his powers to keep the lamp lit, no one is able to put it out. That night, while resting in his trailer, Bradley receives a visit from Victor. He knows very well why his former colleague has gone there and claims that he has never told anyone about what happened. The young man says he lives a totally different life now and wishes to leave the past behind. However, Victor has gone after him with a single purpose and nothing will stop him from completing his mission. He uses his giant fingernails to slit Bradley's throat, and all the park's power goes out. During the early morning hours, Logan wakes up from a nightmare. The man screams like a beast, and his claws end up injuring Kayla, the woman who knows her husband's past and knows that he has fought in many wars. So he keeps having nightmares. The next morning during work, Logan is visited by Stryker, who says he has a job offer for him. 
However, the mutant prefers to continue in his work as a woodcutter, because despite having lived more than 100 years, only now is he truly happy. Still, Stryker insists on asking for his help and informs him that Bradley was eliminated two days ago. Before that, Wade was also eliminated, which indicates that someone is hunting down one by one all the members of the old team. Upon hearing this, Logan states that he can take care of himself and leaves. Before going home, he stops by the school to pick up his wife, who is a teacher. In the middle of the road, they come across two men arguing, and their vehicles are obstructing the passage. Logan honks his horn, but the guys ignore him. Then he gets out of the car, and Kayla soon realizes that this situation could become a big problem. Logan politely asks the man to give them room to pass. However, the guy tries to assault him, so Kayla decides to go over there to calm the situation down. She places her hands on Logan's and the other fellow's shoulders. She then asks the man to let them pass, and immediately her request is granted. Logan is impressed with the woman's ability to persuade, and they both make their way home. In the evening, Kayla tells her husband a story. She tells him that many years ago, the moon had a lover named Kwakwatsu. They lived in the spirit world, and every night they strolled together in the sky. However, at one point, Trickster, one of the other spirits, became jealous and told Kwakwatsu that the moon had asked for flowers, so he told him to go to Earth and pick some roses. What Kwakwakwatsu did not know was that if he left the spirit world, he would never be able to return. Since then, every night he looks up at the sky, sees the moon, and calls out its name, but he has never been able to touch it again. After telling the story, Kayla reveals that Kwakwakwatsu means Wolverine. The next day, after leaving her husband at work, the woman drives to the school where she works. On the way, she meets Victor, and the man approaches her car. Logan smells his brother and walks through the forest until he finds the head of an animal. In that instant, he realizes that Kayla is in danger and runs out to find her. When he arrives on the road, he finds the truck empty and with claw marks like those of an animal. The man cries out for his wife, and as he searches for her in the forest, he finds her body on the ground. Logan can hardly believe what has happened and goes into despair when he sees that the only woman he has ever loved has been eliminated by his brother. Logan sniffs Victor and finds him in a bar. The man was already waiting for him and claims that he needed to eliminate Kayla to get his brother's attention. They attack each other, and Victor attacks him with all his might. In all the years that Logan has been living a quiet life, Victor has been training to confront him. Still, Logan manages to strike back, and after piercing his claws into Victor, he hurls him into a pile of tree trunks. Victor uses these logs to attack his brother, and Logan ends up being crushed. He is then thrown in front of a truck and can barely stand up. Before he leaves, Victor steps on his brother's claws and manages to break them. Logan was badly injured and had to be taken to the emergency room. However, by the time the doctors tear off his shirt, all the wounds have healed. When he wakes up in the hospital, the mutant is furious and asks the doctor where his brother is. At that moment, the Major appears, and Logan goes after him. He thinks it's Stryker's fault his wife died, but the man claims he didn't know it was Victor who was executing his former team members. Logan wishes to take revenge on his brother, but Stryker assures him that he is not strong enough to defeat him. He then says that he can give Logan the power he needs to eliminate any enemy. Upon hearing this, the mutant decides to accept his help, and Stryker takes him to his lab, doctor. Carol prepares Logan and asks that during the procedure, he think about the reason that led him to accept the experiment. It will help him have the strength to endure the pain he will feel. Logan says he can handle it because he's been through worse. But Carol disagrees and assures him that this will be the worst thing he's ever been through in his life. Stryker promises that after the procedure, Logan will be indestructible. He tells how after years of searching, he finally managed to find that component he was looking for in Africa. From that material, their scientists have created a metal alloy so strong that it is able to withstand any attack. Before the procedure begins, Stryker returns Logan's old necklace, but the mutant says he wants a new one with the name Wolverine on it. The Major meets with the other members of the American Army and tells them that they are about to create Weapon X. The scientists then begin applying adamantium to Logan's skeleton, and he begins to squirm in pain. His heartbeat speeds up wildly, and Stryker begins to worry. After all, he is investing $500 million to turn that soldier into an invincible weapon. A few minutes later, Logan's heart stops completely, and everyone believes he is dead. Suddenly, his heartbeat returns, and the scientists find that the procedure has been completed. For the first time, they have succeeded in creating an indestructible weapon. In a conversation with Maverick, Stryker reveals that he plans to use Logan's DNA in Weapon 11 and orders his scientists to erase his memory. 
What no one realized is that Logan was hearing absolutely everything and decides to run away to prevent Kayla's memories from being erased. The mutant releases his claws and stands up. The guards try to stop him from running away, but now Logan is stronger than ever, and no bullet can hurt him. He destroys the laboratory gates and jumps into the waterfall. Then Stryker orders Maverick to go after him and destroy him. On this day, an elderly couple arrives at the farm after a visit to the city. While parking, they see a naked man entering the barn, and Travis goes over to investigate. The old man picks up his shotgun and finds Logan tired and cold, so Travis gives him a blanket to cover himself and invites him to his house. After taking a shower, Logan puts on the clothes of the deceased son of the couple and observes his new claws by touching one to the other. The mutant can produce sparks. When he hears Travis knocking on the door, he gets scared and accidentally ends up cutting the sink in half. The elderly man reports that dinner is on the table, while Logan tries to fix the mess he made. When he arrives in the kitchen, he apologizes for what happened and assures them that he will pay for the broken sink. After dinner, Wolverine goes back to the barn for the night. The next morning, Travis goes to visit him and gives him his son's old jacket. He then asks if the young man would like to take a ride on his motorcycle. Heather shows up with breakfast, and at that moment, a bullet goes through the window and hits the woman. Soon after, Travis is also shot and dies in Logan's arms. The helicopter approaches and blows up the barn, but Wolverine manages to get out of there in time and escapes into the woods with his motorcycle. When he gets back on the road, war tanks chase him, and he is surrounded. Logan then turns around and destroys one of the vehicles with his claws causing the helicopter to almost be hit. However, the pilot manages to get up in time and Wolverine tries to blow him up with a cannon. The agents attack him and end up destroying the tank along with their allies. Logan takes the opportunity to jump into the helicopter and destroy the propellers, causing a serious crash. Despite the crash, Maverick manages to survive and Stryker contacts him to find out if Weapon X is dead. At this point, Logan takes the radio and states that after eliminating Victor, he will go after him. Before leaving, Wolverine uses the spark that comes out of his claws to light a flame in the fuel and blow up the helicopter. After several hours on the road, Logan arrives in Las Vegas and goes to pay a visit to his old teammate John. The man says that after he left, Victor became even more bloodthirsty when Stryker decided to start hunting mutants. John left the team. Wolverine asks if his friend knows anything about an island because before he escaped from the lab, he heard Stryker talking about this place. John claims not to know anything about it but says that Fred might. After leaving the team, the man went through an eating disorder and gained a few pounds. He gets angry when people talk about his weight. Sir John asks Logan not to do that. When he finds him, Wolverine asks about the island and does the exact opposite of what John advised him to do. After calling his former teammate Fatty, Logan is punched and thrown far away. To get through to him, Wolverine enters the ring and the two begin to fight. His blows have no effect on Fred and Logan is knocked out several times in a row. Fred did not expect his opponent's bones to be coated in adamantium and headbutts him. At that instant, the mutant begins to stagger and Wolverine takes the opportunity to deliver a final blow. When Fred wakes up, Logan asks where his brother is and finds out that Victor works together with Stryker on the island. The duo captures mutants and takes them to this isolated place where they experiment on them. Upon hearing this, Logan realizes that Kayla was eliminated so that he would agree to participate in the experiment and have adamantium injected into his body. Fred can't tell the location of this island, but he says that a young man managed to escape from there. His name is Remy LeBeau, better known as Gambit. Immediately, Wolverine goes out looking for this mutant, and John decides to go with him. During class, Scott Summers feels a lot of headaches. His teacher orders him to remove his sunglasses, but the boy says he cannot do this. As a result, the woman decides to punish him and Scott is forced to stay at school after class. While alone in the classroom, he spots Victor approaching and tries to run away. However, Sabretooth manages to knock him down and the boy loses his glasses, destroying half the school with his laser beam. Victor manages to capture him and Stryker appears. Soon after, he applies a sedative to the mutant to take him to the island. At night, Logan and John find Gambit playing poker in a nightclub. While Logan goes to talk to him, John waits outside and spots Victor. The mutant goes after him and discovers that he has just eliminated Fred. Upon hearing this, John is furious and intends to avenge his friend. However, Victor manages to predict his attacks and punches a hole in his chest. At that instant, Wolverine is having a conversation with Gambit and states that the boy will take him to the island he escaped from. The young man notices Logan's identification and tells him that the guys who took him had necklaces, just like his. Immediately, 
Gambit attacks him with his cards and Wolverine is thrown out of the nightclub. Logan finds his brother next to John's body, and this gives him another reason to eliminate him. Wolverine pierces Victor's chest with his claws and is about to eliminate his brother when Gambit appears and attacks them with his staff. Seconds later, Sabretooth gets up and takes this opportunity to escape. Logan tries to go after him but is stopped by Gambit who is determined to eliminate him. The boy does not want to risk being taken back to that island where he lived the worst days of his life. However, despite being a skilled mutant, he has no chance when fighting this new version of Logan. After capturing him, the man says he is going to the island to eliminate Victor, Stryker, and all the people who worked there. Gambit agrees to take him there in his small plane. As the aircraft approaches the island, Wolverine jumps into the water and invades the complex. Upon arriving at the lab where Stryker is, Logan asks why he wants to turn him into a weapon since Victor's attacks were nothing more than a front. The man then tells him that he needed Logan's DNA for the legendary mutant he was building named Deadpool. Now, thanks to him, Stryker and his team have managed to finish Weapon 11. While they are talking, Kayla appears behind Wolverine, and he can't believe his eyes. Logan believes that woman is a mutant in disguise, but Stryker claims that the woman is his wife. On the day of her supposed death, Kayla received an injection of a substance that slows her heart rate so much that it makes the person appear to have died. She was forced to do this because her sister was stuck on that island. Emma has skin as hard as diamond and Kayla has the ability to hypnotize anyone she touches. Stryker claims that Logan was seduced from the beginning and nothing they experienced was real. Upon hearing this, the woman gets watery-eyed, but she cannot deny anything at all, otherwise her sister will suffer the consequences. When Wolverine leaves, Kayla asks Stryker to release her sister as she has kept her end of the bargain. The man promised that if she helped him, Emma would be freed. However, Stryker says that he needs to keep her under experiment for a while longer because he has not found anyone with the same mutation as hers. Just then, Victor appears. He is furious that Stryker has let Logan go. Kayla tries to use her powers to control him and Victor attacks her. Upon hearing, the woman screams Wolverine returns and attacks his brother. Logan has a chance to eliminate him, but Kayla claims that the man she fell in love with is not an animal. Then the mutant gives up his revenge and punches Victor leaving him him unconscious. Afterwards, the woman assures him that she did not manipulate Logan into loving her, because what they experienced was real. She explains that she was forced to do this so that nothing bad would happen to her sister. Wolverine decides to help Kayla save her. Stryker orders the scientist to activate Weapon 11, although the procedure is not yet complete. Seeing all those caged mutants, Logan decides to free them and escapes with them. Just as they were about to go through the gates, Deadpool shows up. Wolverine asks Kayla to find another way out to free the mutants while he fights his former partner, Wade. The swordsman is being controlled by Stryker and has no awareness of what he is doing. They begin to fight and Logan soon discovers that he will not be able to defeat him easily because his ability to regenerate is even greater than his. On the other side of the complex, the mutants are being hunted by armed guards and during the firefight, Emma uses her diamond skin as a shield so that Scott can destroy them. When the way is clear, Kayla says she cannot accompany them and asks Emma to take the mutants out. Despite not understanding her sister's motives, Emma decides to do as she says and has no idea that Kayla has been shot. The group gets lost in a maze and suddenly Scott hears a voice in his head telling him where they should go. Wolverine scales the tower to escape that monster, but Deadpool teleports up in a second. Logan appears beside him, the creature pierces Logan with its swords and is about to eliminate him when Victor appears and knocks Wade out. Sabretooth claims that only he can eliminate his brother and fights Deadpool alongside Wolverine. The monster attacks them both at the same time, and just when Victor believes he has caught him, he teleports and appears on the other side. Stryker activates the laser beam, and Wade attacks his enemies. Logan uses his claws to block the beams while Victor tries to eliminate him. However, his plan doesn't work, and the mutant ends up being hit by the laser. Seeing his brother about to be killed, Wolverine runs to Deadpool and cuts his neck. Even dead, Wade's eyes remain open and the laser beams destroy the tower. As a last resort, Stryker intends to go after Logan himself and shoot him in the head with an adamantium bullet. The man knows that this will not be enough to eliminate him because his brain will regenerate. However, his memories will be lost and Wolverine will not return for revenge. When the tower collapses, Victor and Logan must jump. As the mutant falls to the ground, he realizes he is about to be crushed by several tons of concrete but Gambit appears and destroys the tower fragment with his staff. Just then, Logan hears Kayla's voice and asks the boy to go help the mutants who are trying to leave the island. Upon finding her husband, 
the woman claims that she loves him and Wolverine realizes that she is shot. He then holds Kayla in his arms and intends to take her to safety. However, Logan is surprised by the arrival of Stryker who starts shooting at him. The mutant runs to attack him but ends up taking an adamantium bullet to the head and faints. Stryker shoots once more to make sure that he will lose his memory. He then walks toward the woman and points his gun at her. However, before the man could shoot, Kayla manages to touch his feet and cause Stryker to point the gun at his own face. The woman does not want to become like him so instead of making the man take his own life, she orders him to walk until his feet bleed and after that to keep walking. When they finally manage to find their way out of the complex, the group of mutants is met by Professor X and Scott discovers that it was he who was in his head showing them the way to escape. Seeing that the youngsters have been saved, Gambit goes after Logan. He has just woken up and can remember absolutely nothing. Through his necklace, the mutant discovers his name is Logan and asks Gambit where he is. At that moment, the boy realizes what has happened and claims to be his friend. Without many options, Wolverine decides to follow him but stops when he sees Kayla's body. Although he does not recognize her, he feels that there is something familiar about that woman. When he hears the sirens approaching, Logan orders Gambit to leave and states that he will find his own way. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. We'll see you on the next one.